All right, I think we're live. Testing, testing. All right. Let's wait for some people to get here. Yo, Raul. And Valdal Vandalistica blogs. It's <laughs> an odd one. But hi. So, what we're doing today is we are going to be unboxing a mystery box. I got a box in the mail today. It's underneath the two cats here. I think it's a scooter, but I really don't know what it is for, for certain. the Nissan car. And we have Gatsby back here. He's named after the great Gatsby. Uh, they're pretty chill, but they're going to have to move, unfortunately, because we have to unbox the box that they're on. Sorry, guys. I've got about a 30-second delay on my live stream, so it's going to be not very live when I'm replying to people in the chat. Sorry about that. So, mystery box. I have no idea what's in it. I assume it's a scooter, but can't be certain. Big boxes come all the time here. <laughs> yeah, the cats did give me the look. Uh, we're not moving, but they're going to have to move. They probably think I'm really weird right now for talking to myself. So, I'm going to try and keep this live stream short. The last one went for like three and a half hours, but... With any luck, we can get this done in like an hour. Take the scooter out of the box, see what the heck it is, and maybe get it put together. That'd be nice. But I'm running out of space in my living room here. I it's it's a full it's a full house right now. I've got two more scooters and a unicycle coming too, so I'm gonna need to organize all this up as much as I can in the coming days, anyways. I also have a big box back here that's like uh, interlocking gym fo mat foam, and I'm gonna coat my whole floor in that, so hopefully future videos will look more professional. Alright, let's get the box cutter. I'll take the cats. No, they're my cats. I love them very much. I've had offers to get them away, and I've thought about it a couple times. They're not this nice all the time. But I, I could never do it. Boys, you want to help? Want to help open the box? So let's see if I can adjust this so you can see the box a little better. Maybe I'll move it away from the camera a bit. Pretty good, wouldn't you say? Raul, you donated. People
people donating already. Thank you. You don't have to do that, but I really appreciate it. That's super cool. Thank you, thank you for inviting us to your world. You're very welcome. This is a, my everyday life, day in the life, opening boxes, testing scooters, making videos, editing videos, all the things. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to show that, Mylon the Ghost. That's kind of weird. What's up? I don't know if we should uh, silence Mylon the Goat. That's kind of weird. One guy, Michael, says, Dang, nice setup in your room. Thank you very much. A lot of work has gone into turning my dining room into a scooter shop. Anyway, um, let's open the box. Let's see what the heck's in this thing. Sometimes scooter companies reach out to me, and then they'll send me something like a year later, and I have no idea who it came from because I'm talking to, like, hundreds of manufacturers and dealers and stuff. So we're just going to see who's, who decided to send me one today. And then we're going to make videos about it. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the stream, too. That helps with the algorithm and whatnot. Um, then you can watch whatever this scooter is. We can test it out. Does anyone want to take a guess first, though? That'd be a fun thing to do. Maybe we can guess what scooter is in the box. Oh, Michael says, I do Uber Eats and DoorDash on e-scooters, and I work at an e-scooter shop. Now, I love this world. Yeah, sounds like you're in it to win it, just like me. I never tried doing Uber Eats and DoorDash, but I know that uh, Electric Scooter Academy does that on YouTube. That's pretty fun to watch. One guy says, Emove Roadster. I wish that was in the box. Oh, my. I don't think this box is big enough, though. But I uh, tried to get in touch with Voro Motors about the Emove Roadster, and they said they don't have enough demo units to send me one for review. So that's really unfortunate. I've had a lot of people asking about that, and that that is like one of the scooters I really want to ride. That and the Roadrunner RX-7, I think it's called, that came out with the blue LED swing arms. 84 volt, supposed to go 70 miles an hour. That would be really fun. But I have a feeling this is going to be a sub $1,000 scooter, maybe $1,500 scooter, just based on the size of the box. Anyway, I'm going to get to opening this thing. Some tiny pads. Look at these. I didn't know they got that small. So, probably not the best brakes in the world, but I don't know. Don't bash it till you try it. And we got one more of our multi tools. Everyone loves these multi tools. Let's see what's 
going on in the chat here. It's got to be at least 48 volt or 52 volt based on the box size. I'm going to agree with that. I think it's probably a 48 volt. Maybe 60 though. Hmm. We'll see. It's got the uh, QSS4 type throttle um, thingy that's like probably six or seven years old now. It's got the uh, same turbo and single dual buttons that were on the original Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, like, what was that, four years ago? So, not exactly up to date on the um, gadgets on top. I don't know what scooter it is yet, so I'll have to get it out of the box. It usually says on the deck, and hopefully there's a manual in the box, that'd be nice. here has heard of Liut. I have never heard of them. Actually, I think they messaged me on Instagram like months ago, before I went on vacation last time. Crazy. It's a Liut. Uh, let's see if the model's in here. so that I can put the handlebars on the scooter. That's always good to have, right? I like the folding clasp on it. I'll have to show you guys that. This is what it looks like, apparently. Allegedly. Zan Koi says he's heard of Liut. Where did you hear of it? What are the specs? Should we go look in this thing up? I think we should try and look this thing up. Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Okay. We're going to look up Li Liut. It's really hard to tell if it says Liulit or Liut. They use the weirdest font on the manual here. Liut. Scooter. Let's see, man. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the uh, 1099 Amazon special. Okay. 2800 watt motor. It's a dual motor scooter, though, right? Yeah, it has the single dual button on it. 
52 volt, 25 amp hour. You know, it's really similar to the Coupe here in G3 Pro, I think. Maybe not so much in the looks department, but the Coupe here looks much cooler. But this one still looks really sweet with the gold. I do like my gold scooters, like the Wolf, the GTR. Got 2800 watt motor, we got 10 inch tires. Looks pretty standard. That's a really good deal, though. A thousand bucks? That's crazy that they can make these things and ship them for a thousand dollars. Well, I guess eleven hundred dollars, you know, plus tax. That's pretty cool. Pretty solid specs for eleven hundred bucks, says Michael Cogswell. I couldn't agree more. Man, a thousand dollars. That barely bought you a nine bot like four years ago. But we did sacrifice all the newer ish components on the handlebars. Looks like they designed the scooter and then they went to um, some other website. Wow, <laughs> and then just picked out all the parts on the handlebars. This live stream is lagging so far now. Anyway, I'm going to keep going. We're going to keep going. Not going to let this slow me down. I do need the box cutter, though. <laughs> Where the heck did I put the box cutter? Chargers? We got two boxes that look a lot like charger boxes. These are the lightest chargers ever. It feels like there's nothing in this little plastic box. It's a... 52 volt, I think. Yeah, 52 volt, 2 amp. Max output, 58 volts. That's pretty cool. They give you two, two chargers, so you can charge the thing at 4 amps. A lot of scooter dealers consider that fast charging. But a rule of thumb, the maximum charge rate for batteries is the amount of amp hours that the battery has divided by 2. So if you have a 30 amp hour scooter, you divide it by two, that's 15 amps. That would be your absolute max charging rate for safe charging on a lithium battery like this. The problem is, a lot of scooter manufacturers cheap out and they put um, like really bad wiring from the charge port to the actual battery or the BMS, so you risk catching it on fire charging at that speed. But a lot of them are safe at five amps per port. But this is pretty good too, two amps per port. I can't believe how light these are, though. This would be a good to throw in your backpack. Get, get one of those little uh, things you plug into the wall, the surge protector type things, plug both chargers in, and just go for it. Zenkoi says, I'll bet you they're 2 amp. You're not wrong. They are 52 volt, 2 amp each. Pretty freaking sweet. Let's add those to my pile of chargers. Grab my knife here. Okay, we're gonna keep going. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do something. I gotta do something real quick. on the Wolf King GT or the GTR as the indicators on the stock I feel are not good for oncoming visibility. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. That would be a lot of work though. I think the best thing you can do, I've heard, that the uh, taillight cover for the Wolf King, the standard Wolf King, 
fits on the Wolf King GT Pro and the GTR, so you can unscrew the two screws on the bottom and take off that tinted cover that goes on the tail light and just put on the clear one that the Wolf King had. I've seen a few people do it, and they claim it's just a plug-and-play type thing. Um, so should I wait for the new Max Fun 10 Max or the Arvala M11? Both have high-end components and go 50 plus. I really like the Arvala. Um, oof. I don't know. I mean, that's that's totally up to you. I guess it just depends if you can stand the uh, violet purpley color that the Arvala has. I like it because it kind of matches the Ginger on Wheels logo. That's my whole vibe over here. I got purple LEDs in my editing station and everything, so I like the Arvala. Arvala can be a pain to get parts for. That is a good point. I had an issue with my handlebars. The uh, screws that hold the bars on on the Arvala came loose, and I was riding around like a madman, and it actually like made the holes that the screws go into slightly bigger than they should be, and so then the bars started wiggling. And they didn't want to send me parts to fix it, so that was a bummer. I did have to go get parts for that. Luckily, I think it's something I can fix just from stuff at the hardware store. Remember that it doesn't have an option for a seat. You know, seats on electric scooters aren't as great as you think they are. They're fun, but I, for long rides, at least for me, um, my butt starts to hurt. It's not like a bike where you have some of your weight resting on the pedals and some of your weight you can put on the hands and then some of it goes on your butt. When you're on an electric scooter, all of your weight is on your butt, so you better hope you have a comfy seat. Michael Cogswell says, We've been having an issue getting a controller for an Arvala we have in our shop here for a while. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. I love everything about that scooter, but the parts are just... I wish they had a parts selection list on the website and you could actually just buy them. Pacific Northwest E-Rides. Oh, we're in the same location. You're a huge inspiration and the reason I started my channel and got a scooter. I even got this Ison Wheel GT. Hey, I have that one. That's a nice little fun scooter. Front suspension, not so much, but it's fun. I'm glad that I'm an a uh, inspiration to your channel, though. That's, that's fun. Alien Rides was my inspiration, and then he opened his own shop, so hope maybe they'll do that one day. air suspension that has not pumped up yet. I think I still have my, my air pump around here, but I think you need what, the little suspension air pumps that go up to like 100 PSI. Whew. Should someone pre-order the Roadrunner RX-7? It can go 70, on a, 70 miles on the charge and 70 miles per hour. Yeah, the Roadrunner looks pretty sweet. Not gonna lie, I really want one. I reached out to Roadrunner Scooters, and they're going to send me the RX-5 Max, I think it was called. And they said, if I do a review on that one and I do good, then they'll consider me for an RX-7. So I'll try really hard on that review. So I would love an RX-7. Especially for summertime. That would be so much fun. Bring that thing on the Saturday night ride. Just smoke everybody. Oh, so Michael says, if a removable battery is a big asset, your RX-7 is a nice choice. I did not know that scooter had a removable battery. That's even better. Have you had any issues with taking the GTR's battery in and out? No, I have not. Plug and play. 
That little latch thingy can get bent if you're really reaming on the scooter, but I, I bring a multi-tool with me in my backpack, and I usually can just jiggle it out if I really need to. That doesn't, I think it's happened like three times, two times. Um, Mr. Unpopular Opinion says, Ginger on Wheels is a goat. Keep the amazing work up. I love the videos. Is that an unpopular opinion? I hope not. <laughs> but I appreciate it. Thank you. I try hard on, on all my scooter videos. This is my life now. For anyone who didn't know, I used to work as a vendor at Microsoft. And I was miserable. I worked for like six or seven years there in an office with no windows. I got my original Wolf Warrior 11 Plus, saw the subscribers growing, saw the potential, and just started doing this full time. So this is my life now, Scooter Men, Scooter Bill. Deacon says, I just arrived to the stream. Did you get another scooter to unbox? Yeah, we got one in the mail. We got a surprise Amazon special called the, anyone want to, I guess you can't, I can't hear you say it. I want to say Liout, Liout. I guess there are two O's. It's going to get confusing with my Liat brand knee pads, though. I'm out on the Leo with my Liats. Could you do a video of greasing the headset bearings on the Wolf King GT Pro? I'm going to have to do that video, unfortunately. My GTR has got these notches that are getting worse and worse. So we're going to have to take apart the front end on the GTR and pack the bearings with marine grease. I'm probably going to try and do some measurements once I take it apart and see if I can source some new bearings. I was talking to Fluid Freeride about that actually, and those guys rock. They actually took a wolf apart and got some bearings for me and gave me really exact measurements with a, I think it's called a spectrometer or something. Really accurate uh, measuring gauge. So I've got the dimensions of the Wolf King GT Pro bearings. I need to take the GTR apart, ensure they're the same size, get some bearings, then I'll do a video on it. Do you just do scooter videos, or do you do repairs for other people's scooters in your city also? I, I was doing the repair thing for a while. Uh, it's just a lot of work to try and do that with the YouTube channel. I feel like you've got to do one or the other if you really want to commit to either. I also um, started, and I'm still running, the PEV Outlet website, where I sell electric scooter accessories. can't see it from here, but this side of my house is, I've got like two big storage racks full of parts and stuff. And when people order, if you want to support the channel, that's a good way to do it at pevoutlet.com and then I just ship out all the orders so I'm doing that I'm doing YouTube yeah it's a lot it doesn't sound like a lot but trust me there's so much that goes on behind the scenes for all that the raid says is it French you know it could be I'm gonna guess though that it's just kind of like those suspicious Amazon s s sellers that pop up that have just weird names that kind of sound like a word but aren't really I don't know if this is a word in another language. If someone wants to look that up, that'd be cool. Liut. Is it possible to buy Samsung or LG batteries and replace the generic Chinese batteries? It is possible. Anything is possible if you want. Just got to make sure you're buying the same cell size so that it all fits in the deck when you're done. There's like 18650 and then 21700s are the two common cells. What's your ideal deck size for the most comfort for a guy your size, says Rob Stuff. For me, I really like the InMotion RS. The deck, the width is perfect on that, and the length is really comfortable. It's, finally, I just have a scooter that I can stand on it and not have to, like, brace my foot on the back piece or have the bars up in my chest. I can just stand on that thing casually. That's, I love the RS. Anyway, I'm going to get back to unboxing. We'll see what's, what's going on here.
didn't see a bag for the screws for the fenders, though. That's kind of odd. It's not in the charger boxes. Rule that out. One big screw here. Oh, wow. That's not good. That's not good at all. So three things. One thing, the um, sticker that tells you all about the scooter that's usually on the bottom is really flimsy and it came right off. It was already halfway, halfway peeled off and I thought it was in packaging. It says 28 amp hour, 1456 watt hours. That's like one third the size of my electric unicycle. Whoa. Uh, two, second thing, this is the most disassembled scooter I've ever had to come out of the box. You gotta put the bars onto the scooter, you gotta put the handlebars onto the bars, or the stem I guess. And then it looks like I have to pump up the front tire suspension, but it's really weird because the rear tire is inflated, so I'm hoping I don't have faulty suspension on it. But I have to take the whole freaking thing apart and put a new shock on the front. I actually might have a shock though. I think I have an air shock around here somewhere, on this little... If you can see the bins over here on my left. You should do a video where you show where you show do a kind of tutorial on how to ride an electric scooter and some tips and tricks like how to dance stand on it when riding fast. Uh, I could. I mean electric scooter guide has a pretty good one of those. For me it's pretty basic stuff but if people would watch it, I'll make the video. It would be an easy one to make. I used to ride uh, skateboards and longboards, and I had a little Razor scooter I would do tricks on at the skate park, and i go snowboarding and stuff, so a lot of the scooter stuff comes easy to me, but if this is like your first venture into high-speed something, then that would probably be a useful video. Yo, my Leeuwitz brakes stopped working after a few months. Did you notice that it comes with extra brake pads? Bucky Buck. And also, do you have the same one? Is it? Did you get it on Amazon? They look like really tiny brake pads. Are they zoom brakes? Hmm. Well, it's got cable actuated disc brakes. That's not the best. It looks like 145 millimeter rotors. And little puny brake pads, but I didn't catch the top speed when we were looking at it on the internet. Did anyone notice that? Probably about 34 miles per hour. But with little tiny brake pads like that, that's you got to be careful. Trying to find the large horseshoe-shaped bar on the Wolf King GT Pro. Do you have a source? Because mine got bent in the front. I would first reach out to Cabo. They do have a warranty on the scooter, and they do ship out parts. It takes about a month to get them, though. If you're lucky, you can call Voro Motors and tell them about the part, and they'll email you, and then you send them a picture, and usually they have a good stock of spare parts for popular scooters. So, But I don't know. If you're not a customer with them, maybe they'll be harder to get. But that's what I personally would do. Bucky Buck says, my testing is 42. Interesting. So probably 35 with me on it. I weigh 220 pounds still. Michael Cogswell says, definitely like a C in the brakes department. I'm going to agree with you on that. They'll work. Don't get me wrong. They're still disc brakes. At least we're not using like hub brakes. But could definitely be better. They're the worst brakes of anything I've got in my fleet right now. Have you ever thought about doing a video about a scooter tier list? I have not. I've talked about it in one video, but it wasn't the main focus of the video. I'm curious. I'm going to check out the front suspension on this scooter and see if it's actually broken or if I uh, just need to pump it up. I also want to try and get the stem onto the scooter and then the bars onto the stem and maybe we can see the lights. Maybe it's got some cool lights.
they always do this. They make scooters where it requires two sets of alley branches. And then they send you one set. Allen wrenches from PEV outlet, they have the rounded bit on the end, so you don't have to stick it in perfectly square with the screw. You can have it kind of at an angle and still screw, screw and unscrew the screws. Let's check the chat here. Oh, everyone's just watching me unbox. Okay, I'll get back to it. So, I might need the manual. how we're saving all the money on this thing. Don't buy this if you don't know how to use tools. I'm going to see what order of operations they suggest for putting this all together. Okay, step number one, install the front pole. Insert the fixed shaft and tighten the screw. Could you be more vague, sir? Install the front pole, insert the fixed shaft, and tighten the screw. The big one that it came with or the ones that it took out of there? Is there a forwards and a backwards? Well, I guess just make sure the headlight goes on the front. <laughs> For step three, I know I have to take it apart. I either have to take the clamp off the top or I have to take the mountain bike style thingy off the top of the stem. And their instruction for that is install the handlebar and tighten the screws. Gee, thanks. Revolutionary. Lindsay Smith. Hi, Ginger. Glad I caught you live. I'm glad you caught me live, too. The more the merrier. We're unboxing a scooter, a mystery scooter. And the cats are helping. I said the cats are helping. Come here, Gaffney. You're helping. What, do we, what should we do? This one? Or this one? in the manual, but they should. I'm going to put some Loctite on this screw. people asked me over the years how to put Loctite on screws and I thought in my head it was super easy but this is how you do it. Screw, Loctite, this is the Loctol stuff I sell on PEV outlet. Loctite is kind of runny, you can run off the screw threads, this is more like a gel. You literally just put a little baby sized amount on the threads and then screw it in. And when it sets, after about a day or two, then this acts sort of like a glue so the screw can't rattle out. And that's something that you'll notice on most electric scooters. All the screws are going to come rattling out.
wants the two liberals in this one. Gatsby, you're supposed to be helping. Oh, son of it. Nobody said anything? I forgot this fell off. I gotta put this on before I can put the bars on. This is a burly plant. Check it out. Here's our clamp. I wouldn't say it's... It feels like pretty um, thin. Not thin. The aluminum is, itself is thick, but it's suspiciously light. It's definitely a really chintzy aluminum alloy. But at least it's got three uh, locking points. Hopefully that will keep us upright. Real men don't need instructions. The instructions are all written in English anyways. You're not wrong. Actually, that one wasn't in English, but it's just like, put the scooter together. Step one. Okay, well, do it again. using the drill for this. Now I gotta hammer this pin out though. Joy! Okay, let's, let's get this out. I've got to hammer out the little pin that I put in. See the hole. That's what she said. Okay, there's that. I gotta get this side in.
Okay. That's on there. I'm going to tighten the collar down a little bit. A lot, a little bit. Make sure it's down all the way. Huh, what? That can't be right. Wow. They screwed that up. toasty in here. So, the little uh, golden clamp thing that goes around the front doesn't actually, it slides down to the bottom of the stem, but it doesn't slide over anything on the actual scooter to like hold the stem to the scooter. It's like got this much overlap instead of this much because they're, they're carved a little rut, rut in the stem that isn't on the actual scooter. So, it can only go down to the bottom of the rut. Probably doesn't make a lot of sense when I explain it like that, but I'll show you later. Yo, I have a question. I've just developed a liking for electric scooters, and I considered buying the Highboy S2 Pro. If that's not a good choice, can you give me some suggestions? Also, people in the chat. I'll let people in the chat fill you in on some suggestions. The Highboy S2 Pro is a solid scooter for ultra beginners, though. I didn't break mine, which is pretty surprising. Yeah, assembly on this scooter is no joke. This is like annoying. It only goes down to there, to right there. It should cover this bottom piece, but goes down to right there. That's crazy to me. And there's no other way this could go on. I know I'm doing it right. Feels pretty solid for now. We're going to see how easy it is to break though later. Oh, it's got a built-in steering damper, too? Weird. Or maybe I'm just imagining that, because I don't have the bars on yet. Which is the next step. I'm going to put the bars on. Let's take off this top piece, or maybe I can take off these two side pieces. Let's see. guys. And then hopefully this comes off. No, really? What are these for then? What does that actually even do? These don't do anything except fill a hole that's in the stem. <laughs> what? Okay. Maybe I have to have those out to take the top out. We'll see. Oh, and the screws for the fenders that I thought I were missing, they're actually already on the frame of the scooter. So we're not missing anything. It's just a big pain in the butt. Is so weird. The screws that go through here on the top don't actually do anything at all. Thank you. 
fixed. Oh, those brakes do not feel great. Ugh. So I'm going to leave it. If it starts to come loose, it'll be very obvious while I'm writing. Okay, that's all secured on there. We're good. The rear shock is pumped up. Oh, the front shock is pumped up too. But it has like, do you guys see that? There's like two inches of play in the swing arm. What on earth? Oh, that's why I just found out what this big bolt is for. I'm starting to think they missed this in the manufacturing process. Like They put the one on the back, but they didn't put the one on the front. This is the bolt that slides through the screw in the frame to hold the suspension to the frame. So. If I only had one choice, Reese B says, if you only had one choice, would you go with the InMotion RS, Wolf King GTR, or the Nami Bernie 2 Max? I would go with the RS. I like the RS a lot. But, I mean, that's, I guess I'm, I'm choosing for you. For most people, the RS is going to be better. For me personally, if I'm not filming a video, I like to go off-roading on my scooters. And there's tons of woods and trails around here, so the GTR is supreme in that aspect. But the InMotion RS is better at almost everything else on the street. So, there's that. <laughs> Dashing Trader. By the way, I watch all your vids as well. Hey, cool, thanks. Freshly Charged did a review today of a Punk Rider Pro. Looked like a great deal. I haven't seen that video yet. I'll have to check it out when I'm done. They sure did get a lot of subscribers fast, didn't they? They're up to like a hundred and almost two hundred thousand or something by now. For a while there, I was catching up to them when we were both around like forty, thirty thousand, and then my channel just went, <laughs> and theirs did the opposite. Maybe they stole my subscribers. Yeah. That being said, please subscribe to the channel. I am going to put the front suspension bolt on that I believe should have been done at the factory. There should be a bolt in this hole right here, and there isn't one. Wow. That's a major screw up. I can't even write the thing. Yeah, we're missing. 
missing a piece. That's a real bummer. We're missing a piece. We can't even put the thing together. The thousand dollar Amazon special. Great specs. Difficult assembly. And we're missing a piece. So you see how this bolt is hollow. And this screw goes into the hollowness. And you can tighten them together. And that's how the stem is held onto the scooter. The same thing kind of goes for the suspension. It comes with one of those longer ones. And there should be a bolt that screws into here. To keep the top of the suspension swing arm uh, or the suspension coil attached to the swing arm. And there isn't one. At no point have I seen it. This was just laying in the bottom of the box. The rear one is assembled, which makes me think the front one probably should be too. But they just, someone at the factory fell asleep and like forgot. Bummer. And I don't even, I have to find a way to reach out to these people now. I don't even remember how I got the scooter from them. Womp, womp, womp. Well, you know what we can do? I'm sorry. Kind of loud, probably. We can test the lights. The raid says hit the like button, everyone. I agree. Hit the like button. If you like the stream, if you enjoy this kind of stuff, click the like button. Only 25 likes? Come on, guys. That's weak. Uh, we're, we're approaching on the one hour mark, which is said I wanted, when I said I wanted to finish this, so... I'm going to turn on the scooter, we'll check out the lights. I wish I could give it a bounce, a proper bounce for you, but this front suspension isn't attached to anything and I'll damage it if I do that too many times. Oh, we can check out the headlight too. Bummer. Yeah, big bummer. And I'm not even done, I still have to screw my my front and rear fenders on without cracking them, hopefully. So there's one screw in the top for our headlight, and it just screws right through the stem pole, compromising the integrity of the that's always fun. My cats are going crazy upstairs. And they probably think I'm going crazy talking to myself. Little tiny plug. Um, the headlight here. Alright, let's turn it on. Let's see if it turns on. This is a moment of truth. It's got keys, so I need to cut those off. And then it's the moment of truth. Comes with two keys. It's got the same key reader that the uh, Weephead FS has, just generic. Oof. The handlebar grips slide on the bar, so you're going to have to take these off, spray some hairspray in there, and pop them back on, and hopefully that'll help. This really is the $1,000 special, isn't it? Oh, and you have to actually bend the metal on the headlight to adjust the height of it, so don't do that too many times. Metal fatigue will break that off after a while. It turns on. Let's get it up on the scooter stand and see how fast it goes. <sighs> well, I guess this is technically a motorcycle stand. These brakes, yikes. They just feel like mush. So as far as lights, we have got no lights up here except the voltage readout and the display. We've got two headlights up here, it looks like. We've got our main headlight. It's not too shabby, right? 
It's getting hot though. No lights in the back, really. Huh. When you have all the lights on, there's two lights in the back here. And these would normally light up red and then flash when you hold the brake lever. But they just flash when you hold the lever. That being said, if you buy this scooter and you have no lights strapped to your body, you're completely black from the back. So get some flashy beacon lights for your backpack or something. That's odd. That's really weird. I've never seen that before. I don't know why they would do that. It's got turn signals that work though. Let's check the horn. Okay. The turn signals look a lot like the brake lights. It just flashes the right or flashes the left the rear rear tail light there. Like that's my right turn signal. And that's the brakes. Pretty much the same. Let's test the speed. That front tire is seated so poorly on the rim it looks like the whole rim is lopsided. That's wild. Okay, top speed, speed mode one. The rear brake, come on. Speed mode one, the top speed is 26 kilometers per hour, and the um, eco and turbo button does nothing. So maybe it works only in speed mode three. Okay, 35 kph in speed mode two. Oh, now the turbo button does work. 25 max speed. Or 25 kilometers per hour max speed in speed mode 2 with turbo off. I guess it's in eco mode, so I'll keep turbo on. We'll go to speed mode 3. There we go. 77 kph top speed. A well, Lady Jedi showed up. We are reviewing the Liut. I forget how we decided to pronounce it. So it's a $1,000 Amazon special that I've been trying to put together for like a half hour or more. But seems like it'll go decently fast for anyone that's just joining. We are missing a part. The screw that screws it into this to hold the front suspension on was not included in the box. They just slid this pin in and then the guy at the factory forgot to screw the other screw in the other side. So it came out during shipping and now I have a floppy front suspension. Yeah. So I can't even ride the thing until I get parts from them, which I don't even know I can do. So, that's the situation. Uh, anyway, we got 35 likes. That's 10 more than the last time. But I'm all sweaty. I got the scooter put together as best I can. It's so weird there's no tail lights when you turn the, the lights on. Is that supposed to be intentional? The rear brake also scrapes really bad, and the front side or the front tire is lopsided. I gotta reseat the front tire. Winter Infinite says you can probably get a bolt from Home Depot or someplace. They don't respond. You're not wrong. The only thing is, it's kind of a weird um, type of bolt. It's like a pinhead bolt, but the bottom of it is completely flat, and it doesn't have a round part. On it. I guess it wouldn't matter if it did. Maybe it would. Yeah, I'll, I'll try my best. I'll take another reliable scooter down to Home Depot and try and buff, get a bolt for this thing. And this, this little apparatus, this bolt thingy and this screw are in the top of the stem for no reason at all other than to plug a hole that's in the stem for some reason. Nice black Neko. Yep, that's Gatsby. Gatsby, you have fans. Come here. Gotta say goodbye to everybody. We're leaving. Oh, I don't want to leave either. Goodbye. 
So you're, you're always angry because his food spilled on the ground. I had to move their food bowl, and the automatic litter, the automatic food feeder just put him on the ground. You can go, sir. Good boy. Grumpy boy, making all gurgly noises. Anyway, I think that's it. Unless anyone has any other pressing questions, I'm going to log off. Because i got nothing else to do, really. Clean my house up. I have another whole box and a big pile of foam to throw away. Lady Jedi says, no, don't leave. Sorry. i got stuff to do. It's tax season. Taxes are coming up. That takes me like a couple weeks to do. Ugh. I hate doing that. Plus, i got to clean up my whole house. i got to cut apart this box into little bits that will fit in the recycling bin. The raid says, so is this a Thursday night thing? Uh, no, it's just kind of randomly whenever I feel like it. But next time I plan on doing a live, I will announce it like a day before to let people know. But I did it last week sometime, and I did it this week. Did I do it Thursday last week? I could see how you might think it was a Thursday thing, though. But I didn't feel, feel like filming a video of this thing, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because I would have had to just be like, Oh, sorry, can't even put it together and go ride it. I need a bolt. But live streams are always fun because I get to talk to you guys. When I, when I make videos and publish them, I feel like I'm just publishing them into the abyss. But when I do lives, I like chatting with all you guys in the comments and seeing what you have to say. And Yeah. Someone donated money earlier in the chat, too. Can we thank them again? Let's see if I can scroll up and find it. Raul L., you are the man. He donated in 1999. That was really cool. Uh, anyway, I don't see any other questions here, so... Oh, one more. When do the Seattle Night Rides start this year? It's going to blow your mind if I want to tell you. They never finished. They go every Saturday night. Um, we meet up at Gasworks Park at 7 o'clock, and then they roll out at 7.30. We do a 17-mile loop around Seattle and end back at Gasworks. But obviously when it gets rainy and cold, less people show up. But there's still always people there. I don't think there hasn't not been a Saturday night ride in like two years. I think we're about to have our three year anniversary ride at the, at the last weekend of May. It's going to be a freaking huge turnout, probably 250 people. Oakley Chase says, what do you think about the G Segway GT2? I've had mine for about a year. That was a really fun scooter to review. I don't know why that, that video on my YouTube channel got like 800,000 views. and. It was basically just an impromptu video I did. I drove up to Canada to go get my electric unicycle fixed, or no, to review one of their unicycles. And it's actually the red, the unicycle I have back here with red pads on it. But I drove there, and while I was waiting for them to f finish filming and to finish doing business for the day, I said, well, can I film a video while I'm here? Maybe I'll take the Segway GT2 out. And they said, sure. So I took the scooter out, did a fun ride, came home and edited it, and it ended up being one of my most popular videos on the channel. Go figure. But I love the scooter. It was a good scooter. You can watch that video and get my sentiment on it. I think you're sacrificing uh, top speed for quality and obviously availability of parts and good customer service and stuff, but it's like a, a rich boy scooter for sure. Winter Infinite says I'll have to come one of these days. My Apollo is not good in the rain and it has limited range, but I'll try my best. I've seen people there with Apollos. So you'll make the ride, just don't try and ride to the beginning of the ride. Like me, I live uh, 15 miles away from where the ride starts, and the only scooter I've got that can ride from my house to the beginning of the ride and then do the whole Saturday night ride and then back to my house is the InMotion RS. The Wolf King GT Pro will make it, but I have to go like 15 miles per hour, and the GTR does not make it. Kaka says, will the V2 be a good scooter for a bigger dude? The V2 of what? I don't know what the V2 is. Sorry. Have you thought of living anywhere else other than Seattle, Lady Jedi says? I think about it all the time. The problem is I have a mountain of scooters and parts, and all my businesses' addresses and taxes and everything is all set up for this address. It would just be a huge pain. But I think about it a lot. If I didn't pay somewhat cheap rent for this place, I would be thinking about it more. 
it's just so depressing living in Seattle. It rains so much, and that's not really great for my hobby, is it? If you could be left with only one scooter of your fleet and only what and only what and the sorry, my brain is turning off. I've been doing this too long. If you could only be left with one scooter out of your whole fleet and one only, which scooter would it be? Me personally, the GTR, because I love off-roading, and that scooter, you can't even come close to touching the capability of that scooter off-road. But if I didn't have trails and stuff around here that I like to ride, then I would choose the InMotion RS. I love the geometry, how big the deck is, the way the suspension feels at high speed, the range obviously is insane. Yeah, in motion RS. Plus, then you've got the support of Voro Motors backing you, or E Wheels, depending who you buy it from. And they're both pretty dang good with customer service. Oh, the Roadrunner V2. Okay. Um, sorry, what was your question about the V2? Will the V2 be a good scooter for a bigger dude? Yeah. I mean, you won't get the range that you like, it gets surprisingly low range. Um, I think it has a 60 volt, 30 amp hour battery, and normally I would expect about 30 miles of range out of a battery that size, or 25 if I'm sending it, but I have a, sh a hard time getting 20 miles of range on that, but I'm a bigger guy, I don't know if you can tell on camera, I'm like 6'2", 220 pounds, and I ride pretty aggressively, and the Roadrunner is a great scooter if you ask me, but only in about 15 miles of window. Like, if you plan on leaving the house and you don't plan on your ride being 15 miles or, or more, then the, the V2 is an awesome, I guess it's an e-bike in my mind, but scooter, yeah. The Roadrunner Pro is even better, though. Cabo said they'll put a 35 amp hour battery in the GTR to replace the 33 version in review unit. Do you know if it's true? How big of a difference in range do you have between the GT and the GTR yourself? Um, I don't know if that's true. I think they were saying that from the beginning, and it's been like a year now, so tick tock. But the difference between 33 and 35 amp hours isn't really significant. It would be cool if they put uh, higher discharge cells in there, like Samsung 50S or something because then you won't get as much voltage sag and you can ride it at higher speed for longer before it has the low voltage cutoff. But I don't know. I don't know if they're doing anything with the batteries or if they're just keeping them as is. I've got no complaints with it. I just can't go on rides farther than 30 miles because I like to ride really fast and off-road. 30 miles off-road is a long way too. If you're planning on buying it for that, it's like a full-on body workout. Oh, Lady Jedi says there's a Voro down here about 50 miles from me in Los Angeles. That's their main hub. You should go visit. Go make a video. That'd be a fun video to watch. Do you know if my Max Mods Fat Max will work with the 9 by F2? Uh, I don't. I don't think it will. I think the firmware that they use is exclusive to the 9 bot Max. So, I don't know if they have a modified version of the firmware that you can chuck on the F2 that will work with the controllers in there. I really wish that had come with this piece. It would be fun to go out riding right now. It's been raining like cats and dogs for days, and we finally got a break in the sun. And I was hoping to go f put the scooter together and then film the video outside, but it's dark now, and we don't can't even put the scooter together. So, bummer. Does the Pro get even less range? I believe it does. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they both have 60 volt, 30 amp hours. Or is, no, the regular Roadrunner is only 52 volts or 48 volts, isn't it? The V2. I don't know. Sorry, I don't know off the top of my head. But obviously the Pro goes faster. The Pro can freaking send it, like peeling out the tire all the time. And that's going to munch through the battery pretty darn quick if you're using those features. So I would, I would venture to say yes, the Roadrunner Pro probably gets less range. But I don't know. Don't take my word for it. Don't hold me to that. Take it with a grain of salt. 
Do you think a battery extender will be a good idea for scooters with less amp hours like the Wolf King GT? I assume you mean the GTR. Uh, battery extenders are a good thing, generally, if you're riding on the street, but particularly for the GTR, you're going to be off-road, and you have to strap the extra battery onto the handlebars, and it's already really front-heavy, so I think it would make maneuvering darn near impossible to have an external battery on that thing. I personally wouldn't do it, but it wouldn't surprise me if there's someone out there who has a freaking trailer pulling around batteries, you know. Were the shocks hard to replace on the Pro? No, not at all. On the Roadrunner Pro, I replaced the rear shocks in like 15 minutes. And I, I think I used 280 millimeter road, or, um, suspension, but I read somewhere that some guy used 320 in it. They still fit, so. Well, not. But all you need to do is swap the springs with the ones. I link them in my Roadrunner Pro unboxing video in the description. It's an Amazon link there. And I'm, or I'm sure you can just Google it on, on some forum on Facebook or something. But they're really common to get. They're sold on Amazon by like 100 different sellers. And easy to put on. And they really are all you need to do. That's all you got to do to fix it. Oh, we're up to 41 likes in the chat. Can I get some more likes? If you're enjoying this, maybe uh, like the stream. That'd be fun. I'm trying to get my algorithm to push my channel up so I can get some freshly charged level subscribers. I'm stuck at the Ginger on Wheels level. I've been at 41,000 for like six months. Not that I'm complaining. I appreciate all my subscribers, but you know, more is always better, especially when this is your full-time job. I currently ride a Visa 10 Plus. That's a solid scooter, Lady Jedi. So it's been overshadowed by a couple other scooters now, but the VSAT 10 Plus is still a solid choice. I think I would choose the Arvala M11 more, even though it's like a few hundred dollars more, and it just has that extra battery. It's got 35 amp hours instead of 28. Have you ever considered modifying a cheaper and slower factory scooter for the fun of it? <laughs> Ray, living good. You clearly haven't been watching the channel. We modified the piss out of a 9 bot max, and it's like it's running on 72 volts right now and goes 44 miles per hour with field weakening turned off. It's out of control. So, yes, I have done that, and it's very fun to do. It's just very expensive and time consuming. The V2 is a 48 volt battery, says Kaka. I don't know, they might be close in range then. I don't know. I, you'd have to watch some range test videos on YouTube to get a good idea of that. I didn't do one. At least not yet. I don't have a V2 at my house, though. I only have the Pro. So I'll take what I can get. What's your favorite 9 bot scooter, says Peter Caulfield. Uh, 9 bot scooter? Probably the 9 bot Max G30, just the original one, because it's so heavily modifiable. It's got all sorts of mods you can do for it now. Custom firmware and all sorts of stuff. But if you're talking about Fegridge Segway scooter, then the Segway uh, 9 bot GT2 is a freaking sweet choice. Very expensive, though. I rode the V-Set to work before we went on spring break. My co-workers have never seen anything like it. It was kind of cool to see their reactions when everybody's asking whose it was. Yeah, that's... I gotta say, that is one of the more fun things about riding around insanely expensive electric toys, is if you go into a store, or if you're just hanging out checking your phone, pretty much every single person will be like, that's so cool, where'd you get that, what's it called, what's the top speed, how far does it go on a charge? And, yeah, I've got some really interesting reactions. Are there upgraded shocks for the Roadrunner Pro? Yes, there are, we were just talking about that. When, I'm, when I close this live stream, you should rewatch it about 15 minutes ago. We were talking about the Roadrunner Pro suspension. Is finger throttle better for off-road? Yes, finger throttle is a must for off-road. The thumb throttle, you have to take your thumb off the bar to use. And your thumb is like what grips you around the bar, you know? So if you have your thumb, it's harder to hold on with all your fingers, especially when sometimes you have to reach for the brakes. You're holding on to the handlebars with like two or three fingers. So... Yeah, trigger throttle for the win. I don't, if you guys watch um, RK9 Rides, the YouTube channel, that guy just recently, I think yesterday, published a video where he crashed, and 
he was blaming the bumpy roads and everything. But it was pretty obvious to me that it was the fact that it was a thumb throttle scooter with a scooter that had no suspension and goes ridiculously fast. He had hit a bunch of bumps and his hand just slipped off the bar because his thumb wasn't used to gripping. It was used to switching back and forth between the throttle and the grip. But yeah. Tr trigger throttle for off-road, thumb throttle for on the road. Make sure you have suspension. That's all I gotta say. I'm talking about the Arvala you mentioned. Arvala, I feel like it needs the, the uh, trigger throttle too. A thumb throttle wouldn't be bad on it though, but the Arvala can go off-road and it's got heaps of torque, so trigger throttle. They're also sometimes easier to find. There's a lot of generic trigger throttles that you can just plug on to most scooters, but the Mini Motors ones are not compatible with anything else. By the way, to help... Winter Infinite says, By the way, to help make finding that bolt easier, the type is called Sex Bolt. I'll take your word for it. I'm going to go into Home Depot and say, I'm looking for sex. Can you help me? We'll see what they say. I don't think it'll be too hard to find this bolt. If it's not at Home Depot or Lowe's, it'll definitely be online somewhere. It's just a bummer it didn't come with it. It's such a cheap scooter, though. I can't believe this thing only cost a thousand bucks shipped to your house. That's wild. The V2... Kaka says the V2 is 1400 and the Roadrunner Pro is 2600 so is the Pro worth the price difference in price? That's completely up to you. I don't know. It does have more watt hours in the battery. It weighs a lot more. But if you're into like ripping around absolutely ludicrous speeds, then you kind of have to get the Pro. The V2 doesn't really do that. I'm getting a headache, you guys. I'm sorry. I think I have to end the stream. I didn't get good sleep last night at all. Oh, yeah. You guys like my cup? Wrong way. Anyway, um, we ended up with 44 likes. That's pretty good. Thanks, everyone, for watching. I am going to log off. I'll try and make a video of this scooter when I get it up and running. The Liut Amazon Special. Uh, Gatsby, any last words? You good boy? Okay. Yeah, that's it for me, guys. I'll see you around for the next video. Ginger on wheels, over and out.